So, you clicked on this video just to perv on some men, didn't you? No? Oh, okay, it's not the same as lizards? Okay, I get it. It's fine. In this video, I'm going to do more of a realistic battle scenario than the one I did the other day where we had three Saurians. This one is going to be large funds armies, things that you might actually see in quick play. If you're looking to see all of the new units in the DLC, then you'll want to check out my previous video that came out the other day. Or if you're watching this video after the release day of this video, then you'll probably have a better video to watch where I go through all the units as I usually do. So you'll maybe want to look for a Hunter and Beast unit video from me instead. Anyway, onwards. So here we are as the Hunt Marshal's Expedition. This is Marcus Wolfhart's faction. They're all yellowy in their colour. And we're going to be facing off against Gorok and some of his goddamn dirty lizards. So let's take a look at the army. First of all, my front line, although only two units of great swords. This is going to be my armor piercing damage. Hold on. Is that the fella from the other day? The guy that got hit by the Saurian and looked absolutely terrified flying through the air. He's back. He survived. And he's come back to fight again. He's a brave man. He's a brave fella. So two units of great swords. Got some halberdiers on this edge. Some spearmen with shields on this edge. And I've got that on both edges. So more halberdiers on the other side and more spearmen on the other side. So protecting my flanks from monsters. Now on my right hand side I've got the war wagon and this is the regular one with the hand gunners in it, the armor piercing missiles. This one's better than the others in a way because it has the 360 degree firing arc so it can kind of be a skirmish unit even though it's not that fast but it's still very useful to have when you've got all that missile power. On the other side I've got some demigriffs with halberds because of course anti-large. So that's the front line and the flanks of my army. Now in the back line we've got all the missiles of course. Got huntsmen first of all, I've got two units of these. These are anti-large missiles, of course, these are one of the new units, great for taking down those monsters, although they lack armor piercing, they've only got a little bit for my armor piercing missile needs. I brought some hand gunners along, because of course these are going to be very useful for getting through the heavy armor of some of these bigger lizards, got to be careful of letting them run around too much, these can keep them in check. And then I've got the silver bullets, who are kind of going to be here just to patrol and look after the other missile units almost, so if a large monster breaks through the front line and starts trying to disrupt my missiles, my silver bullets will be there because they do have stalks so the enemy won't know they're there and they can protect all these other missile units potentially. So they're quite far back in the army, but that's why. I've also got a grey wizard and of course the big man himself, Marcus Wolfhart. So let's take a look at him first of all. Look at his glorious Baywatch run. Got a nice fuzzy hat on. He is ready for action. So let's take a look at his stats. Let's pause this a second so we can have a good look. So Marcus Wolfhart, what kind of character is he? He doesn't have a ton of armor, first of all, but he does have pretty good melee attack and melee defense. So he can hang around in melee, but his weapon strength is not armor piercing. So he does have to look for those softer targets. His strength, of course, is in his missile damage. It's humongous, it's dangerous, it's anti-large, it's armor piercing, it's horrible. So use him at range. He's a good skirmisher, of course. Going to be very powerful at taking down any large foes as well. He's got this focused shot missile, magic missile, which does extra damage to large and his armor piercing, so that's a good choice for taking down these large heavy monsters. And he also has the Hunter's Snare, which is just a net spell, so it'll keep anything in place and allow him and others to blast it to pieces. And then he's got Fleet Footed, which is just there to really keep him out of trouble. It'll increase his speed and acceleration so he can get away from things that are trying to chase him if need be. So that is mostly Marcus Wolfhart and what he's all about. A skirmishing lord, very powerful and great for taking down those larger targets. So that is my Empire Army, the Hunts Marshal's Expedition. Now let's have a look at this Itza army that be coming my way. So I tried to build an army, this is against the AI I must stress. I built an army that should be good at taking down one with lots of missiles. So they've got lots of skinks, a few armor piercing skinks, got some skirmisher skinks. Things that should be able to overwhelm the enemy with numbers and flank around and get into all these missiles and stop them firing. On the edges I've got some Sora spears for a little bit of better anti-large in case of obviously Empire cavalry. Got some pterodons and some ripodactyls to try and harass the missiles. And of course, I had to bring a Dreadsaurian along to try it out. This is the regular one, not the cheap one, but not the expensive one. Still very strong though. So we'll see how well he can do. It's going to depend how well the missiles can be controlled by the enemy. It's really going to dictate how he survives. And then more skinks and sauruses on that side. So that is most of the Lizardmen army. Their lord is the great white lizard himself, Gorok. Let's have a look at him as well, just like we did Marcus. His glorious Baywatch run, not as elegant as Marcus's, but still nice. So to go through his stats, you may notice that he's a bit of a tank. He's got a silver shield, lots of armor, lots of leadership, lots of melee defense. So he's going to be able to survive very well, but he does have a good amount of armor piercing weapon damage and decent melee attack. So he will be able to dish out the damage in the melee fight, whether it's against lords or infantry. 
And for his abilities, he's got the Shield of Aeons, which will give 60 armor and expert charge defense to not only him, but allies around. So that could be very powerful on the front line early, especially if it was a front line of Saurus or Croxagors or something, it would do a lot of damage because it has so much protection. He also has Stand Your Ground and the Rock of Itza, which will give him 44% physical resistance and some vigor. So nice protection, even more tanky there and some physical resistance as well. So yeah, just an absolute tank in the melee going to be a tough one to take down. So that is the Lizardmen army and they doth approach me aggressively. So first things first to deal with, the Saurian. This is what I'm trying to look to take down right now because it is the most dangerous thing on the field of course and one of the most expensive as well. So Marcus has got his beady little eyes on this because it is a fresh kill to be taken. So all of our missile units anti-large armor piercing are going to be looking to get into this thing. My halberds, all ready to shit themselves, have been saved by Marcus's snare that's going to come in and keep this goddamn Saurian in place. I'm now going to look to try and focus my missiles on this. Going to try and blast it with Marcus's ability as well. You see that crosshair coming in above the Saurian there. But Ripidactyls are coming in to disrupt my precious handgunners who are focusing this down. I also have a Hammer of the Witches back here, which I missed. So I've been using that to gun at this thing as soon as it came into range. Done a fair bit of damage so far, but these Ripidactyls are causing me problems, tying me up. I'm going to be using these other Huntsmen to shoot them to try and get rid of them as quick as possible. The anti-large damage will be playing on them, so that's always good. Halberdiers are getting stuck in as well as my demigriffs after the Saurian. This thing is the centerpiece of the army so the sooner I can take it down the better. Nearly got it down to half health with all this damage I'm putting into it. I am kind of ignoring all the skinks and things at the moment but doesn't really matter just get the goddamn Saurian dead. The great swords are engaged with skinks on the front line. Of course the enemy AI isn't that great so it's all kind of clumped up. It would be much better if it all went around. Gonna drop a pendulum. It's gonna destroy most of these skinks on the front line. Easy pickings for those. And then on my right side Still just holding things off with the halberdiers and the spears. My wagon starting to do a little bit of damage. I'm trying to get it to shoot these Saurus spears as they are one of the more dangerous units on the field. Done a little bit of damage so far. They should be able to stay out of range of those. Getting rid of the Ripidactyls, they're falling back. Freeing up my handgunners to fire again. Still getting a lot of damage on this. But it's still charging around. Gonna get a pit of shades in there. So it's really crucial if you bring a Saurian to try and disrupt these missiles. Because I'm just having a field day right now. Just absolutely blasting this thing down. You can see it's routed off already now, so I'd be wise to try and chase it off. I'm going to keep my Hammer of the Witches firing at it, but everything else is going to turn to focus on the other stuff, because we do have to deal with the rest of the army. Pterodon's coming in, trying to get after Marcus, not really doing a lot there. So things are staying pretty controlled so far. Our great swords are broken here. Not sure how they broke so quickly. I think the Ripidactyls may have got a hold of them, and maybe Gorok as well, but he's only got six kills. Going to get some great swords after him. Going to need the armor piercing to get through all of his armor. War wagons over here. So this is the beauty of war wagons. They can kind of flank around the side nice and quickly and they can just shoot things in the back. And that is just so unbelievably powerful. It's really fantastic with these armor piercing missiles. Even worse if you do it with the Hellblaster volley gun. Oh, the Saurian has come back. He's going after my Hammer of the Witches. I did wonder how that thing died. I didn't actually see what killed my Hammer of the Witches, but I did notice it was dead in battle. Now I know. So I've got my handgunners all trying to focus it down again. Got some of the huntsmen just firing on the infantry. And yeah, this battle's been pretty easy, as it normally is against the AI, because they never flank anything. They've got all this room to put skinks through the middle to try and disrupt my missiles and to attack them. But they don't. If they could have, this would have been a different story, because that Saurian would still be charging around. So it's going to be interesting and fun to play against these in multiplayer and see what people come up with and see how easy they really are to deal with. Starting to focus these skinks down with missiles, getting some good damage on old Gorok. Dropped him Feebling Foe on him as well to reduce his melee defense. Saurian's come back, and the net is coming back as well. Reserving that for this thing until it's dead. Got it trapped in place again. Gonna try and pull my missiles and my wizard away. The missiles are routed though. He's nearly dead, although he does still have a few thousand health, so not really that close to death, but we'll keep hammering away at him with those handgunners, and hopefully it shall fall. For the most part, this battle's gone okay. Huntsman trying to get rid of those skinks. Demigriff's on the charge now, gonna get some flanking charges with them. Get rid of these skinks, easy peasy. Skinks, of course, not great in the leadership, not going to hang around too long, not going to take demigriff charges. There's the Dread Saurian, getting shot. Is he going down? There he goes. He collapses. All the little skinks fall off. And it has felled. So it took a lot of missile firepower, but that thing has finally gone down. So now we just got to clear up the infantry. And it's all good for Marcus and the expedition today. Gorok still holding on though. See, he's taking an absolute beating. He's been fighting great swords for a while. Marcus is in here now, stabbing him up. But he's still going. He's still tanking on. Skink skirmishes in there. My war wagon pressure in a little bit. 
Setting up a demigriff charge on this far side to hopefully seal the deal over here. Line up, my boys, and charge for Sigma. For fucking Sigma. There we go. Break, please. We broke the skinks. The sources are too tough. The source warriors are holding up. Bastards. So just mopping up the rest of the skinks now. But there is a little demonstration of some of the new Empire units in action. My personal favorite, the War Wagons, doing very well so far. Got some cool new missile units. This map is also awesome. This is one of, I guess, Marcus's kind of maps. It's pretty much an Empire city in a Lustrian area, which has been pretty ruined. Oh, uh, don't get to show you the whole thing. I want to show you this little bit as well, because there's kind of a ruined port over here, which looks awesome. It's all on fire and shizzle. Looks pretty cool. So yeah, an awesome new map as well. But there we go. The Hunts Marshal's expedition has defeated Gorok this day. Let's take a look at some kills. The Hammer of the Witches getting zero kills. Mostly because it was just shooting the Saurian, but that's fine. Demigriff's doing well. Lots of kills for these Huntsmen. They were racking up the kills. I guess they were shooting Skinks. Halberd is doing really well as well. Better than the Great Swords, curiously. And then for the enemy, the Saurian, even though it was getting blasted that whole time constantly, it's still got 75 kills. So they can still put out some work even when they're being absolutely hammered. So there you go, a little bit of Marcus Wolfhart and his boys in action. I hope this was entertaining in some way, even if it is against the AI. In future, I'll maybe try and get these against an actual person that also has the DLC early, of course, because AI is just a bit rubbish, and it makes the battles not really battles, it's just kind of a slaughter. So yeah, it would be better if I could get them against an actual person. Now, in the coming days, I'll have my proper unit roster video that I normally do for these DLCs, so you can watch out for that. I'll also be doing a stream where I test out the units in various situations, which I normally do as well, where we answer questions like who does more damage to a Saurian, the anti-large Huntsman missiles or the armor-piercing handgunner missiles. We'll see. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the future.